everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. This is day two of the Liberty Sew Along. We are sewing this gorgeous Liberty Flag quilt from Villa Rosa Designs. Yesterday was day one and we covered fabric prep and cutting it. Today is one of those days where we have to draw some lines and we have a load of lines to draw. What we are going to do is we are going to take blue fabric E and turn that into stars and white fabric D and turn that into stars. But in order to do that, we have to create the star points first. And star points can be a challenge, but I have a pretty cool way to kind of keep it straight and help you guys figure it out. So some of the things I wanted to talk to you about today when you get to where you're ready to start working on this again. I am an assembly line sewer and what that means is, is I will do all of my cutting up front. I will generally sew the same thing. I will sew all of one side of my blue square points at once. It's easiest for me to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over. My brain gets comfortable with it and it just becomes easier over time. And then I will cut all of the star points off. Uh, the, um, the part that's underneath, we'll cut that off and then fold it over, iron and press it. And then I will sew the star point squares to the other side of the blue and do all of those at one time. So that's, that's just, is so much easier for me. If I were to do one square at a time, to me, I've got to make my brain think about all the different parts and make sure I get it straight and do all of that at different angles. And especially when I'm doing parts with angles, I tend to do the same one over and over and over. That's just an easier way for me to do that. Let's talk about a quarter inch seam versus a scant quarter inch seam. Unless a pattern specifically calls for a scant quarter inch seam, then don't worry about it. Whether you're using a quarter inch foot or not, I recommend that you make several tests and figure out where exactly your quarter inch is going to be on your machine because sometimes the line for the quarter inch on the plate underneath the presser foot, sometimes it's this side of that line. Sometimes it's like right in the middle of that line. Sometimes it's on the outside of that line, depending on how wide that line is. But you need to figure that out. I'm going to talk to you in just a little bit about turn of cloth and creating those star points. You've got to figure that all out in order to get those star points correct. What I would recommend is to cut some smaller squares and cut some larger squares that are equivalent to the squares in the pattern and test. Run several tests and make sure the way I show you in just a little bit to get everything to measure out properly that you are doing and you're using the right kind. I do not recommend just blindly going ahead, oh, it'll be fine and sewing it because you really run the risk of your stars being wonky, big time. So be careful about that. Just figure out exactly where you need to sew based on your machine because all machines are different. Every one of them is completely different. Before I press things open, I like to finger press my seams and, and get them from the center and, and kind of easily press them. I don't crease with my nail. Just push and press and get them to open up and then take an iron and go ahead and push that crease down. I do not use steam, I use a nice dry iron, hot dry iron. A lot of patterns will tell you press to the dark side. In this particular quilt, I'm not gonna get all hung up on that. If you can press to the dark side, then do. I'm not gonna pay attention to that. I'm, I'm really not. In, in the big grand scheme of things, there are going to be times when pressing to the dark side works and pressing to the light side is unavoidable. It's just the way it is. And especially when you're doing the star points, 
when you have the smaller square on top, it's going to want to automatically, and you go to fold that over, you're, you're going to be, you're not going to be pressing to the dark. So it's going to be very difficult to figure that out. I'm not even going to fiddle with it. I'm just pressing everything the way I want to press it. And then when it comes time to put everything together, I may switch directions. That's usually the way I roll. I'm not, I'm not super picky on that, you guys. I'm not doing a show quilt. And to be honest with you, I think when it's all said and done, you're really not going to notice anyway. I make an attempt to do that. I am not super picky about making sure that it's done that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you how to draw the lines on your squares. It is not as intuitive as you would think. And then I'll show you how I do my stitching up close at the machine. I want to show you a concept on paper, what I'm about to show you how to do with fabric. And this is really important for you to understand so that you can get your fabric points correct. So this is the outline of a six inch square ruler that I have. I just drew an outline of it using a Sharpie. And we're going to mimic drawing a line, a diagonal line on our squares. But there is a concept of something I want you guys to see. If I take my ruler and I place it exactly in the corner right here and exactly in the corner down here so that the ruler itself, it is exactly corner to corner or as close as my human eye can get it anyway. Now I'm going to take my pen and it's important to use a fine point, but in this case, I'm going to use this larger Sharpie so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. If I were to draw a line from corner to corner, okay? Now we just said that the ruler is placed on the corner to corner. So then the line is not exactly on the corner. The line I just drew is just a little bit to this side of center, of the diagonal center, which if you were to take a microscope and look at it, this half, this triangle underneath the ruler is actually larger than this triangle that is not under the ruler that is on the other side of the line. This one is larger, this one is smaller, and because this one is smaller, I'm going to take my marker and I'm just going to make a little mark on it right there. So that tells me, even though it might look like the diagonal line is actually going on the diagonal corner to corner centered, it is not truly centered. It is just a little bit over. In garment sewing, this would equate to about two threads, maybe three, depending on how thick the weave is of the thread. This in garment sewing is what is called turn of cloth. And it is especially important when you're doing collars and you want to fold that collar fabric over and make sure you want the shorter piece of fabric on the under collar and the larger piece of fabric on the outer collar. Otherwise, the collar will flip up when it is sewn. This is kind of hard to tell because this is a fat marker. When you make these lines, it's important that you use something more ballpoint type. You can use a pencil. I'm going to be using a friction pen, not a friction marker. I prefer a finer point than a marker. What this means is, is if you have your ruler that is exactly from point to point and you draw your line beside the ruler, then the piece that is not under the ruler is actually a couple of threads smaller than the piece that is under the ruler. So you're going to make a mark on the smaller piece and this is the part that is going to be cut off. 
This is really important that you cut off the smaller piece. You're going to sew exactly on the line. So if you sew on the line, you're actually sewing on the smaller piece of the square. And this is the part you're going to cut off. If you sew on the line and you cut this piece off, when you go to fold this over, it's gonna to be too short and it will make you crazy. I was able to apply some mad sewing skills, garment sewing skills to quilting. They don't talk about it a whole lot. Matter of fact, they don't talk about it at all. I've never seen it anywhere. And it used to make me crazy until I was actually watching a sewing video and they reminded me about the term turn of cloth and I thought that's gotta be why my stars never work out. So what I'm going to do, and I'll, I'll do it on uh, the white ones so it's easier for you to see. You need to do it on the back of the square and you need to do it to all, I think there's 68 squares, right? This is something to sit in front of the TV and do for good, good for homework. Okay, I am going to take, I can find it. Oh, it's right here, just snake it a bit me. <laughs> so the way I do this is I go ahead and just take my ruler and I put it exactly on corner to corner Make sure it's on there. I start in the middle and then I take my pen and I kind of go to the end. You don't want to tug it, all right? And just go to the end and make a mark. This is the point that will be cut off. That's the point. The point with the mark is the shorter side and that's the point that will be cut off. And then what we're going to do, let me do another one so you can see. So we'll have two of them. This is, uh, this is where you can take one of those little uh, uh, cut and press boards into the living room and sit in front of some Netflix and do that. It's gonna take you a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew one set of blue and let you see what it looks like. I am using an off-white thread in here. I will use the same thread for all of my stitching, putting the whole thing together. So I'm going to, you gotta think about where your points are gonna be. That's gonna fold up like that. So let me, the easiest way to do it is to put the piece toward you that you're trying to measure up don't try to put it up there backwards and look at it backwards. There we go. So now I can see right in here, I don't need to use leaders or enders because this machine is kind of industrial and the pressure between the presser foot and the plate underneath is tight enough that it holds it. And this also has a single hole needle plate which is invaluable when you're quilting. I absolutely love that. Okay, this is good. And I just can keep an eye on the line and make sure that the drawn line goes uh, the hole between the foot there. And then I also have diagonal seam tape on here from Cluck Cluck. So that makes life a lot easier. I can make sure that the end of my drawn line stays on the red line, which is uh, center. That's good. And then I'm going to, you guys, when I start sewing, I generally uh, don't cut my thread unless I absolutely have to. I almost make it a contest with myself to see how far I can sew without cutting my thread. I'll put that exactly on the corner, exactly on the corner. It's always short side to the outside. Now when you're doing these, you don't want to sew one and then the other. You want to sew one, and before you cut it, fold it over, make sure it's going to fit without any kind of drama. That looks really good. See that? You can't see any blue. That looks really, really good. So now I know it's gonna work. 
And a lot of times what I do is I will just go ahead and sew all blue squares, one side of them, the whole way through. Then I will start and cut them off one at a time and sew the other side. And that's how I do assembly line sewing. So now that this one is on, I'm going to, this is a steady Betty. I love this, it makes everything stick. I'm gonna press it with my fingers. I always finger press. And then I'm gonna take my little Cricut iron and I am not swishing straight back and forth on that. All right, so the reason I tell you not to sew them both on, what happened to that other square? Is this one, which is short side to the outside, when I do this, is actually going to cross over and cover this other point by a quarter of an inch right there, all right? So now I'm gonna sew this, I get that even just like that. I'm gonna sew it. I put the start of the line right in front of the needle and I put the end of the drawn line right on the end of my diagonal seam tape on the red. And just keep the drawn line in between the groove on the presser foot. When you do a lot of these, if you have a knee lift, you're gonna want that. I absolutely love my knee lift. I cut at about a quarter inch seam allowance. If you want to take it to the cutting board and do a rotary cut, you can. You can eyeball it, not a big deal. This looks great. See, the square has retained its square shape. I've got a quarter inch seam allowance right here that I need. And if I take this other square, look at that. See how it matches up nearly perfectly. And I put it right on top. I've measured here and here. You can't hardly see, right? And you can even tell on this one. So if these edges are exactly matched down here, there is a couple of threads right there. That is something that I can work with when I'm doing my seam allowances when I sew the blocks together and right there on that edge. Across the top, they're fine. The big thing is up here at the top, this is gonna match. These match, they're not short. It. I don't have, You don't, that what I just showed you, you can overcome uh, with, with a seam allowance. This, you really can't, or if it's like twisted because you did a swishy with your iron, all right, that's harder to overcome. So this is pretty darn close, pretty darn close. Okay, you guys, that's it for day two. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time. You guys go mark up your squares and stitch your big stars together, okay? We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.